this game is meant to replace life itself, but it's also psychological torture. Yes, I am talking about Genshin Impact. I have played this game for about 5 months trying to get to the end of the main quest, and just last week, I did it. But first, why did I play it? My friend Neuronlox228 is an avid fan of Genshin, always talking about how cool the game and its contraptions are, so I did a trade. I would complete Genshin Impact and he would start home stuck, so that is why I have played this game. Now, I have completed the game. While he is in Act 3 of Homestuck, we exchanged autism for schizophrenia. The story of Genshin Impact is quite literally impossible to put in a single video. Even if it's 800 hours long, the game has an estimated 70 million words of text, spread out over about a zillion quests. But I will do my best to summarize it. There are more different characters than a game of Hearts of Iron 4, of course. There will be heavy spoilers for the entirety of Genshin Impact in this video. If you ever want to play it, I don't think it is a good idea, though. Let's begin. You play as the Traveler, which comes from a top-secret redacted location, and falls from the sky into Germany after an accident. After dropping from the sky, we explore for a bit in the German countryside, before we meet the worst character in literally all of fiction. It is, of course, Paimon, a three-year-old girl who literally follows you for the entire game, and has more than 80% of dialogue lines. Paimon doesn't feel so good. Paimon hasn't opened a treasure chest in so long. If this keeps up... Ooh. After a bit more messing around, we arrive in the capital city of Germany, called Mondstadt which is literally City of the Moon put into Bay I to translate by some poor Chinese worker. In this place we meet three of our other party members, and you're going to be stuck with them unless you pay up some Chinese yuan to get them in a loot box. Yes, almost everything in this game has to be obtained by gambling. You have to pay 160 gems to use a loot box, which has only a 10% chance of giving you something good. These 160 gems are worth about 3 US dollars. But the game actually gives you gems for free at a decent rate. Now, we learn that there is a Dragon Bosch terrorizing Germany. To beat him, we must obtain the Holy Liar of Bullshit, in the Bullshit Church. But as we try to get it, a Russian special agent takes it away from us. Yes, Russia exists in this game, and they have been conducting special military operations over the entire world. Because of course, like in any game, Russia is evil. But Genshin Impact isn't just racist towards Russia, because many of the enemies also have Italian names. I must now skip over 6 hours of dialogue and 7 side quests to actually get to the first main boss. This is Dvalin, which honestly took me by surprise when I started it. It's an actually decent boss, which can't be fought by spamming left click and Q. I'm surprised that the game can actually run at 60 FPS with the amount of detail that's going on, and this game is even optimized for phones. Now, after finishing our mission in Germany, we meet the German god, his name is literally Wind, but Bayidu translated to Italian for some reason. After a cool 3 weeks of work we have finally completed the prologue, and can now get started on chapter 1, which takes place in China. Now, China is the best region of the game by far, which makes sense, because the game was developed by the Chinese. It's also 5 times bigger than Germany, and has a shitload more stuff to explore. Upon our arrival to the Chinese capital, we quickly meet a spy from Russia. He tells us to go meet some mythical figures because, apparently, the Chinese god was assassinated, and we have to find out what happened. So we spend the following 4 hours of gameplay running around China and doing grindy tasks, as well as climbing several 90 degree mountain cliffs, just like Mao Zedong intended. By the way, exploration in this game is stupidly detailed. Every single region has several hundred chests, encounters, and items to obtain. There is a quest later on that sounds very cool, and locks half of an entire region. However, I like walking in real life but 11 hours on one quest is just too much. 
food in this game is also stupidly important. There are about 150 recipes that you can get from various sources of the game, and almost every single quest will start with a 20 minute unskippable dialogue on how the characters want to eat Jowling fried chicken from the Kingwa restaurant in Tianzu Crossing. But mostly, the game's camera tries to focus on the character's unrealistically drawn boo. This means that there are several people that watch Genshin Impact gameplay without actually playing the game, because they have nothing to do with their lives other than watch anime pixels on a screen. Proceeding with the Chinese quest line, now I finally understand why Neuronlox228 has been sending me pictures of Jade for the past 6 months. This, is Tiananmen Square, but in the sky, also known as the Jade Chamber. Reaching this point requires another 5 hours of grinding and getting random items from point A to point B. And then we finally reach the Jade Chamber, this spot is supposed to be like the Chinese People's Parliament but in Genshin, and this, is where we fight the boss, after another 10 hours of grinding. Apparently, some Russian guy used Hyperborean black magic to summon an ancient god, and we need to defeat the boss, I think this is the best boss fight in the game. It is quite intense and you need to be doing something constantly to not get hit, unlike the other bosses, where you can just defeat them by spamming left click and Q. You are being attacked from all sides, and you need to use human skills like concentration instead of rapidly spamming a single button at a single target. The casualties from the accident are the entire Jade Chamber, as well as several copies of Greg Tech which were harmed, and then respawned. During the fight, now Zong Li who was an NPC for the past 10 hours of gameplay, suddenly reveals that he is the Chinese god for some reason, and he tells us that we should go to Japan. Reaching Japan is quite dangerous, it is currently closed, so we need to find a boat out of China which will take us secretly to Japan. After another 2 hours of random mini-games which have nothing to do with the main quest, we arrive. Of course, we can't get out of the starting area or the Japanese Imperial Police arrests us. The whole theme of this area is electricity, just like wind was the theme in Germany, and stone was the theme in China. It is known that Japanese people keep 1 million volt live wires everywhere in their country. By the way, the characters actually talk about manga in this part. Manga is real, and it exists in Geishad Impact. The Japanese emperor is a dictator that does quite a few war crimes and her goal is to become immortal by stealing other people's vital components. Just like the 15th century Jiajin Emperor in China, our goal is to stop this from happening. We have to ally with the resistance and fight in the Japanese Civil War. All of this is happening while quite a few thousand volts are raining down above us. So, we have to train to become the greatest ever Sigma to defeat a god. Once again, this quest requires us to go all over Japan, and obviously, Lasts about 4 hours of pressing space before we get to the final fight which is, truly one of the left click pressing contests of all time. After continuing our mission in Japan, it is now time to reach India. But before reaching India, we must go to China first, because we must become slaves to the Chinese to mine cobalt. This, is the chasm. It's the worst region I have ever seen in any game, ever. Navigating this shit without unlocking the in-game map is pretty much impossible, because it's literally a cave that is over a kilometer deep. You're either going to get stuck on a wall, or check YouTube. After defeating the Xinjiang labor camps, we finally arrive in India, and holy shit, this was a long one. The developers decided to switch from the usual 3 hour long quests to 8 hour long ones. The amount of shitty dialogue to skip is much higher than in the other chapters. It takes us several hours, and over 50 kilometers of walking to reach the Indian capital of Sumeru. I thought these guys died out 6000 years ago. Even if its name looks so old, India is the most technologically advanced civilization on the planet. They actually managed to be a superpower by 2024. They have managed to put knowledge in bottles, and every Indian citizen is equipped with a neural network chat GPT 3.5, also known as the Akasha. This can cause very bad side effects when you have a literal listening device planted into every person's brain. 
This can cause very bad side effects when you have an Elon Musk Neuralink device planted into every person's brain. One of the main quests involves repeating the same thing approximately 40 different times, because the nerds over at Indian OpenAI are doing some trolling. While this quest has a very good story, its combat is not very good. Most fights in Genshin can be defeated by spamming left click, E, and Q. If you're feeling particularly high IQ, you can make combos with different characters. But since Genshin is mostly a porn game, you don't need much skill to beat bosses. Most bosses kill you just because your level is too low. To increase a character's level, you are forced to grind over and over in the Chinese fields. There are several ways to level up your character, and only Redditors with a thousand hours in the game know about them. You can get character talents, artifacts, weapon ascensions, refining, coxass, bullshit, and your mom. It is so complicated that the University of Carnegie Mellon in the US has an entire fucking graduate course for it, but what is truly fucking stupid, is that some things can only be upgraded on certain days. If I am stuck on a boss, and I need the ruin of shits to upgrade my weapon to level 60, I will need to wait until next Tuesday. The second part of the Indian quest line does not take place in India. It takes place in the Sumerian desert, which is inspired by Iraq. Most Indians in this game are racist towards the desert people, who pray to Allah, instead of Vishnu. The desert is an insanely big area which takes up about half of the map. Exploring it isn't so difficult, because there are some magic thingies which shoot you several hundred meters. We get to the desert, and we have to do errands for about 5 hours before getting to the final part of the quest. Truly, this game is meant to replace life itself. You will not have time to do real life chores because you will be busy pressing space over 800 lines of dialogue in Genshin. The most annoying thing about this, is that you are locked in a special story mode, which means that you can't leave the game, or you lose all progress. After completing the Indian quest, we reach the final area so far, known as Fontaine. The region is meant to be inspired by France, but half of the names are in English, or Italian, for some reason. One of the sub-regions is literally called Poisson, or Fish. This region has a really good design, it's based off of a steampunk and water theme. It has two different water bus lines, just like Venice. And the capital city is huge, it's easily the biggest one in the game, and I would say it's also my favorite out of all of them. Sorry Beijing, but you're too small. We meet the French god within the first 20 minutes of our quest and she is the most annoying one of them all. She is constantly in your face. In France, there is a very complicated legal system. Trials are live streamed to half of the population, and the verdict is decided by a magic system, powered by chat GPT-4. This is what happens when the judicial power is given to an anime god with the mind of a seven-year-old. The entire gameplay loop of this chapter is like Ace Attorney, but it doesn't require any brain power because the game just tells you the answer if you get it wrong. We have to do several different court cases, with the last one, being against God itself. Of course, all of this happens in a special story mode, so make absolutely sure that your computer will not be turned off, or you will lose up to 6 hours of progress. We also voluntarily commit a crime to infiltrate the French prison which is located about 400 meters below the surface. I think that the building itself is quite neat. There are several layers and I like the steampunk theme, but the quest itself is ass. You run around the prison for about 6 hours doing mindless tasks, while not very much happens in story, until the end of the quest. And this brings me to my final point. Genshin Impact has very cool environments, but it is weighted down by how bad the story dialogue in the quests are. And that is where Genshin Impact ends today. Only the first five regions, out of seven, have been released. The sixth one, based on Mexico, will release this August. And the final one, which is Russia, will release next year. I am quite excited to see the SVOing going on over there. Overall, I rate this game a C+. There is some cool shit, but there is so much boring shit. If this game was ten times shorter, it would be a B or even an A. And don't you dare try it. It will take over your life.